We're in the seventh week of the sermon series, Filled. Everyone say Filled. Through this series, we're being filled with the fullness of God, all that God is. And today we're going to talk about being filled with patience. And I know none of you need that this morning, right? None of you need patience. It's like this. We all want patience, but we want it now, right? Patience is a fruit of Holy Spirit, but it's not a fruit that comes easy. And you can't learn patience by just reading about it. Patience has to be developed. Patience is a product of practice, and you know the saying, practice makes perfect. And if there was anyone in this Bible that needed the practice, who would you think that it might be? Simon Peter. Simon Peter's probably the most impatient guy in this Bible. I wonder who might be the most impatient person in this place today. No name calling, no pointing fingers. But there is a great lesson on patience in Simon Peter's story. I want to start in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. I'm reading from the Message Bible this morning. The Bible says, walking along the beach of Lake Galilee, that's where many of us would like to be right now, walking along the beach, right? Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, later called Peter, and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me, I'll make you a new kind of fisherman. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. Jesus was teaching the disciples how to catch women, (laughs) y'all. They didn't ask questions, why would you? But simply dropped their nets and followed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this moment in time. We thank you for this word that's so ripe and in season for each and every one of us today. And God, I pray for a strong anointing from beginning to end, from the first word to the last, every point, every scripture, every illustration. God, anoint the deliverer, but also anoint the receiver. Anoint hearts, minds, eyes, and lives. Speak to your people. God, I pray for great revelation in this hour of great darkness and that you would prepare your people for what's ahead. Make us ready in this hour. We thank you. We honor you. In your mighty name, if you're ready to hear God speak, say amen. Amen. On this day by the lake shore, Jesus called Simon Peter to be a fisher of men. A fisher of men was the original mandate that God had given the disciples. The mandate or the great commission to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, Mark 16, 15. Matthew 28, 19 says to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But church, Simon Peter knew nothing about fishing for men. He knew how to fish for fish because he was a fisherman. And how many know it takes patience to fish? When it comes to fishing, Jojo has none. He expects to catch a fish as soon as he drops the line into the water. And if he doesn't, he reels it in and throws in again and again and again and again. And I'm like, Jojo, you cannot catch a fish unless the line is in the water. They're never going to bite outside of the water. It takes time. Just throw it in and wait. And the title of my sermon today is, It Takes Time. Everyone say, It Takes Time. It takes time to get a bite. It takes time to catch a fish. It takes time to learn to fish. It takes time to become a fisherman or a fisher of men. It takes time. And Jesus spent the next three years teaching Simon Peter how to become a fisher of men. And I want you to notice that Simon Peter was called to be a fisher of men in Matthew chapter 4. But Simon Peter didn't get to preach his first sermon until Acts chapter 2. When I was a youth pastor, I always had a burning desire to preach the word. 
to preach on Sundays from the main stage to the main congregation because I felt like God had given me a word for the church in that hour. But church, I only got to preach like once a year if I was lucky or unless the pastor was sick. And so I prayed regularly, God, please let them be sick this Sunday. I've got a word. I'm joking. I'm joking, pastor. Your sickness was not a result of my prayers. God doesn't work that way. So Simon Peter was called to preach in Matthew chapter 4, but he didn't get the opportunity to preach until Acts chapter 2. Church, there was a distance of time between Matthew chapter 4 and Acts chapter 2. And I don't know the exact distance of time, maybe three to four years because it takes time. See, there's always a distance of time between the promise and the possession. Come on, I said there's always a distance of time between the promise and the possession. I don't know how long you've been waiting on a promise of God, believer, but there's always a distance of time between the promise of God and the possession of that promise. Point number one, the promise takes time to possess. I said the promise takes time to possess. I said it takes time, Cindy. It takes time. And this is where patience is developed in between the promise and the possession. See, this is where patience must be practiced in between the promise and the possession. In between the promise and the possession is where growth takes place. It's where breakthroughs happen. In between I wonder how many of you in this place today are in between the promise and the possession. I wonder how many of you are in the midst of a growing season. I wonder who's about to step into a breakthrough season. In between is always eventful. Peter's in between was rather eventful, almost comical, y'all. Peter was very impatient. He thought he knew better than Jesus, the God in the flesh. He argued with the disciples on multiple occasions. He argued with Jesus. He cut a guy's ear off. He cussed three people out by the fire, and he denied Jesus three times. Church of St. Peter gives me great hope today. See, God was patient with Peter's impatience. And how many thank God that he has more patience than you this morning? Let's go to 2 Peter 3, 9. And the Bible says, and this is Peter speaking. He said, the Lord isn't slow to do what he promised. As some people think, rather he is patient for your sake. Everyone say, your sake. He doesn't want to destroy anyone, but wants all people to have an opportunity to turn to him and change the way they think and act. Church, Peter was speaking from experience. Simon Peter was an impatient guy, very impatient guy like many of us this morning. But listen, church, Jesus knew exactly how impatient Simon Peter was the day he called him on the lake shore in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus knew that Simon Peter would be impatient with instructions, with people, with circumstances, and with his calling. See, Jesus doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. Amen. Amen. Simon Peter is a great example of impatience. Jesus often had to repeat himself with Simon. How many are like Simon? Come on, can we be real? How many has made Jesus repeat himself? He had to tell Simon Peter to feed the sheep three times. Like I had to tell Jojo to take out the trash three times. See, patience is developed over time. Peter started with no patience, but he ended with great patience. See, he wrote this letter in 2 Peter at the very end of his ministry. Come on, think about it. At at the very end of, this was his last letter to the church. And so after years and years of learning and growing and maturing in Christ, he wrote this. God isn't slow. He's patient with us for whose sake? Our sake. 
How many know you learn things over time? And patience was developed in Peter in time through his circumstances, through his situation, through trial and error over and over and over. Simon Peter should give you great hope, Cindy. Let's go to James 1, verse 2. And the Bible says, Count it joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Everyone say patience. Patience, patience is developed with and through testing, and not without testing. Patience is produced and developed through trial and error over and over and over. Point number two, patience must be practiced. I said patience must be practiced. Because practice makes what? Perfect. Now let's read verse 4. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. See, see when Jesus found Simon Peter on the lake shore in Matthew chapter 4, he was a very impatient guy and far from perfect. Because Jesus doesn't call the perfect, he perfects the called. And Jesus took the time to perfect Peter's impatience. Come on, church. Jesus will take the time to perfect your impatience. Remember, he's called the perfecter of our faith. And he will take the time to perfect your impatience. He's patient with us. For whose sake? For our sake. Patience takes time. Think about it. We go to school for like 12 years just to learn to read and write, y'all. And then again, that's not enough for some of us. You might have failed a grade or two. And depending on your career choice, you might spend another four or more years in school specializing in that field. Or if you're like Bryant, you'll spend the next seven years in school to become a physical therapist. It takes time. Now think about this. It takes that much time to just to learn the basics. Yet we expect to step, step into our purpose in like seven seconds or seven months. But listen, church, it takes nine months for a baby to be born. And then again, the baby comes out knowing nothing and can't do nothing but cry, poop, and keep you up. They can't walk, they can't talk, they can't feed themselves, clean themselves, wipe themselves, nor take out the trash. They're virtually useless. <laughs> Babies take time to produce. Yet we expect the things of God to be expedited and we get impatient with God when it takes time. Some believers get saved and they expect ministry doors to open in like seven minutes. Can somebody say it takes time? See, Jesus called Simon Peter in Matthew chapter 4, but how many know Simon Peter wasn't ready to preach in Matthew chapter 4? Well, come on, Pastor Tom, you know what I mean. See, Simon Peter might have dropped some F-bombs from the pulpit, y'all, and I'm not talking about faith and forgiveness. Remember, he had a dirty mouth. He wasn't ready to preach. And remember, in 2 Peter 3, 9, he said, God is patient for our sake, for my sake, for your sake, so that no one is destroyed through the process. See, God doesn't want anyone destroyed through the process, through the process of ministry. And so that's why he doesn't release us until the time is right, until we're ready, until the ground is ready. Through impatience, Simon Peter might have blew the whole thing up. The church might have not have ever been birthed if Simon wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to step into his purpose in Matthew chapter 4 even though he thought he was. Like patience, purpose must be developed. It takes time. And in John 13, 37, Peter said, Jesus, why can't I go with you now? Impatient people say, now. Impatient Peter said, now, Jesus, I'm ready. Why can't I go with you right now? How many have prayed, God, open the door right now? God, make a way right now. God, send my future spouse right now. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> right now. <laughs> but Jesus said, you're not ready 
Simon. Jesus said, it takes time, Simon. And Peter probably felt like Jesus was trying his patience. Anyone ever felt like Jesus was trying your patience? Will anyone be real today? I'm sure Peter was frustrated in this moment. Listen, I know firsthand the frustrations of ministry, of waiting and waiting and waiting on God or a promise of God to be fulfilled. I'm sure he was frustrated in this moment. God, why isn't it happening? Jesus, I'm ready to be sent out. It can be frustrating waiting on a God whose timetable is very different than ours. Remember, a a day to him is like a thousand years to us. Or let me say it this way, a thousand years to us is like a day to him. Now let that hit home. On God's timetable, everything is on warp speed, but on ours, it's on sloth speed. As much as I would like God to speed things up down here, that's not the way it works. Point number three, patience is submitting to God's timetable. I said patience is submitting to God's timetable timetable see God knows when we're ready for the purpose that he created us for and he will release us when we're ready when the time is right he's patient to get us ready and when we forget he reminds us how many has ever needed to be reminded and how many has ever needed God to confirm a promise in your life Jesus confirmed his promise to Peter in Matthew 16 18 a very familiar verse I want to read but I'm reading from the passion translation the Bible says and Jesus says I give you the name Peter this is where Simon's name was changed to Peter and what does Peter mean a stone a rock Petros and this rock will be the bedrock foundation of which I will build my church my legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to over power it Jesus confirmed Peter's calling in this verse and he'll confirm your calling Jesus gave Peter a greater revelation of his calling in this verse he said I will build and birth my church through you and no demon in hell can stop it that's a big calling church and that's a big promise from God see God has made some big promises to this pastor about this church and about this city He said that Crossroads would not just be another church in the city, but be a church for the city. And he promised me this in CB and CL and Glenwood and beyond. And like Peter, I've lost my patience with God a time or two. I've gotten a little impatient with God. You said this, God, let's go. Let's do this. Come on now, God, make this happen. Fulfill your promise. Right now, I'm ready. But Jesus said the same to me that he said to Peter, you're not. He said, it's not time. You're not ready. The ground's not ready. The people aren't ready. Your leaders aren't quite ready, but it's coming, Joseph. Jesus said, it's coming, Peter. And when the time was right, and when St. Peter was ready, he preached his first public sermon in Acts chapter 2 and it was so profound that 3,000 people were added to the church in one day through one sermon one powerful anointed man of God stepping into his purpose think about it if he would have been released prematurely three people might have got saved 30 or none I preached my first public sermon the day after I got married, Aaron. I was a youth pastor. My entire family was in town. We got married in Cache, Oklahoma, Lawton, Oklahoma. We lived in Cache, Oklahoma. I know what I'm talking about. (laughs) My entire family was in town. My wife's family was in town. I said, Pastor, I have to preach this Sunday. And I preached... A message that God had laid on my heart. And you got to know a little bit about my upbringing. 
I grew up in a home where my dad never embraced the Christian faith. My mom was a Christian. She, she taught us. We did Bible studies at the table daily. She prayed with us daily. She would not let us miss church not one time. She wouldn't let us visit churches. It wasn't a cult, I promise. But she didn't want us to be fed by some other doctrine or philosophy of ministry. But my dad never embraced the Christian faith. He, he didn't have a problem really with us being Christians. In fact, he, he sacrificed, he worked hard so that I could go to a Christian school and graduate from a Christian school. But I prayed my entire life that he would give his heart and his life to Christ. Me and my youth pastor used to pray daily that God would get a hold of his heart. And the day after my wedding, when I preached my first public sermon, my dad gave his heart and his life to Jesus in that sermon. He, he came to the altar and hit his knees at the altar and gave his heart and his life to Jesus. Today, he is an ordained minister. He is a chaplain over a min motorcycle ministry. He teaches Bible studies. He is being used by God in a, in a mighty way. He does a daily prayer time on Facebook live every single Thursday evening. <laughs> and so years and years and years of praying. How many know it wasn't time? It takes time. See, God had a plan. God had a purpose. And I thank God for being a part of that plan, of being able to lead my dad to Christ. I've got another powerful story I'll share at another time, but I was able to lead my father-in-law to Christ and lead him through the sinner's prayer. And he gave his heart and his life to Jesus. And I've got it on video because he was basically in his last days of life. And so we, I asked him for his hand in marriage and led him to Christ in that meeting. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8 and 9 and Peter said but you must not forget this one thing and remember this is his last letter to the church and he's wanting them to remember this one thing he said a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day which he, he repeated the words of King David from Psalms in verse 9, he says, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. Peter spoke from experience. The Passion Translation says his delay reveals his patience. The Voice Translation says God's timetable isn't the same as ours. I don't know, but I think I can sense a tad bit of frustration in Peter while reading this. See, patience wasn't a natural fruit in St. Peter's life. He wasn't born with patience, church. It had to be developed. It grew in time. Patience isn't a natural fruit in your life. You weren't born with patience, believer. In fact, you were born impatient. How many were a patient toddler? One of you? You're lying. <laughs> I've never met a patient toddler in my life. I want it now. <laughs> and what do they do if they don't get it? throw a fit but we've all been told to be patient right is there anyone in the place not ever been told to be patient not one person yet we're taught impatience through society we want everything in an instant we want everything right now again we want patience but we want it right now we want a microwave kind of patience don't we listen I know impatience very well I can get impatient with the microwave anyone when I'm hangry <laughs> it's time to eat people we are so impatient we get impatient with fast food when it's not fast enough right? I witnessed a lady at Walmart the other day getting impatient with the cashier but get this, she was in self-checkout. We are so impatient, we get impatient with ourselves. 
Has anyone ever run out of patience with yourself? It's been said that patience is a virtue. We've all heard that, right? But I say patience is a vital virtue. We must be patient with the God of patience. In Romans 15, 5, the apostle Paul called God a God of patience. Another translation says he's the source of our patience. And one translation says that he gives patience, but he doesn't give it out like candy. He gives you opportunities to develop your patience. And Christians can be the most impatient people in the world. We just simply don't like to wait on anything, do we? And it's almost like God likes to keep us waiting. Point number four, the God of patience will try your patience. Come on, I said the God of patience will try your patience. It's almost like he wants to wait to the very last minute or second and then move. How many has been there? How many has ever felt like God has tried your patience? People will try your patience. Kids will try your patience. Your children will try your patience. Teenagers will try your patience. I guarantee you somebody has tried your patience today. All right? Circumstances, life, and the God of patience will try your patience. Paul also said this in Philippians 1 verse 6 he said I am sure that God who began the good work within you will keep on keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns remember he's patient for your sake but we get impatient with God because the work is taking too long to complete right it's almost like an oxymoron because the completion of the work depends on my compliance. Come on, church. I said the completion of the work depends on my compliance. That's point number five. Completion depends on compliance. See, we get upset with God when the fruit isn't growing fast enough. But believer, the growth of my fruit depends on my compliance. Are you with me? We get upset with God when things aren't ready, but God's saying it's you that's not ready. He's patient for your sake and for others' sake so that no one is destroyed through the process. That's why some of you don't need to get married today. You're not ready. You might just destroy someone's life. Some of you know what I'm talking about, and you know it all too well. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. The Bible says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. I think I missed faithfulness in there somewhere. But it's in there. I'm being patient with them right now, so just bear with me. I asked them to go very slow because there's a lot of components on that table. Let's go way up here, guys, way up here. The Bible says that patience is a fruit of Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit produces this fruit in you. Notice the word produce or produce, as in a fruit or a vegetable. And if these spiritual fruit were physical fruit, love might be a strawberry. In fact, how many gets chocolate-covered strawberries in February? (laughs) These are probably one of the most favorite fruits, right? Right? These are the easiest to grow. These take about six months to produce from seed to fruit. That's about right. You can fall in love in about six months, right? 
If joy was a fruit, it might be a raspberry. These take about 18 months to produce. If peace were a fruit, it might be a pineapple. These take about two years to produce from seed to fruit. The fourth fruit of the Spirit is what? Patience. Patience takes time to grow, right? Takes time to develop. And if patience was a fruit, it might be a lemon. Sour and bitter. Come on, how many feel me? These take about three years to produce from seed to fruit. I think that's what it took to produce Peter. About three years, right? I think it took about three years to produce an ounce of patience in impatient Peter. But think about this. Peter walked and talked with Jesus for three years. Simon Peter sat under Jesus' ministry in person, not online, not virtual, in person for three years. We don't have that great privilege. Listen, the best you get is Pastor Joseph. And so if it took three years of following Jesus in person to develop Simon Peter, it's going to take you a lot longer, believer. All right? A lemon is probably my least favorite fruit. I don't sit around and crave lemons. Wish I had a lemon to slice up and eat. Patience is probably my least favorite spiritual fruit besides self-control. And I know some of you know what I'm talking about. This probably takes the longest time to produce. But all of these fruits don't start off as a fruit. They start off as a seed. This is a lemon seed that produces a fruit. In how many years? Three, Three years. First has to be planted, cultivated, taken care of, watered, sunshine, and in time it grows to a tree that produces lemons. And you know you can't make a fruit, right? You can't go to a factory and make fruit. You grow them. But it's in between the seed and the fruit that growth takes place. It's in between the seed and fruit that breakthroughs happen. And just like a fruit, a physical fruit, a lemon takes time to grow, spiritual fruit takes time to grow, believer. And it's in between the seed and the fruit that growth takes place. It's in between the seed and the fruit that breakthroughs happen. And when we grow in faith, when we mature in faith, our fruit grows and blossoms. Let's go to 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. And the Bible says, but to obtain these gifts, you need, you need more than faith. You must also work hard to be good. And even that's not enough. For then you must learn to know God better and discover what he wants you to do. Remember our prayer for 2022 is, God, what are we called to do in 2022? Not just as a church, but individually. Because we are the church together. Verse 6. Next, learn to put aside your own desires so that you will become patient and godly, gladly letting God have his way with you. Verse 7. This will make possible the next step. What are the next steps in Christianity? What comes after salvation? Baptism. Studying the word. Reading the word. Spending time in the word. Prayer is the next step. Tithing is the next step. Which is for you to enjoy other people and to like them. And finally, you will grow to love them deeply. Verse 7, verse 8, this is where it's at. The more you go in this way, the more you will grow strong spiritually and become fruitful and useful to our Lord Jesus Christ. The title of next week's sermon is Fruitful. See, waiting can be bitter. 
Delays can be bitter, believers. Setbacks can be bitter if we let it. If I take this lemon I got two seeds That was two seeds Church that was bitter And listen it's okay to be bitter for a moment But don't live bitter Believer See if I keep biting this lemon, my mouth's going to continue to be bitter. But if I don't bite it, the bitterness goes away. See, don't let bitter moments lead to bitterness. Don't let bitter moments lead to a lifetime of bitterness. Life comes with bitter moments. We all will experience bitter moments. Waiting can be bitter. Setbacks, bitter. Delays, bitter. Unfulfilled promises, broken dreams. Life is full of bitter moments. But don't let these bitter moments lead to bitterness, to a bitter lifestyle. See, it's how we approach these bitter moments that will make all the difference. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Make lemonade. Oh, come on, church. I said, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Cru grapes have to be crushed to make wine. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Seeds have to be planted, and they have to be broken to grow. And lemons have to be squeezed to make lemonade. See, take those same bitter moments because I used to be a waiter squeeze them add a little water and a whole lot of sugar because I'm from the south stir it Mix it up, and voila, you got lemonade. Something, something sweet from something bitter, another seed. <laughs> something better from something bitter. Point number six, patience takes what life gives you, and makes it better come on patience is taking what life hands you and makes it better when life gives you lemons don't get sour don't have a sour attitude don't be bitter believer be better let me say this Patience won't always make things better, but it will make you better. Come on, patience might not change anything in the world, but it'll change you. It might not change these circumstances, the situation, the delay, but it'll change this. My mind, my thoughts, my outlook, my perspective, and it'll change this, my heart. See, patience changes you. Not always your circumstances. Life will come with setbacks. Life will come with delays. And failures. With broken dreams. Broken promises. But patience prepares you for all of it. Patience prepares you for the delay. Patience prepares you for the setback. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says that patience inherits the promise. And you know what that means? Ronnie, that means patience receives the promise. And what is patience? The ability to wait on something without 
giving up. Setbacks, delays, failures, mistakes. All right, if I could get everyone to stand. Hebrews 6, verse 15 says that Abraham received the promise by waiting patiently. It takes patience to receive the promise. Listen, I don't know how long you've been waiting on a promise of God. I don't know what God has in store for your life. I don't know if you're standing before a delay, a setback, a failure. But I know that I know that I know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life wherever you are. And it takes patience to step into that purpose. It takes patience to step into that promise. Like Peter, he could have gave up. When he failed, when he made his last mistake, when he denied Jesus, he could have walked away. But he didn't. Come on, I said he didn't. Because Jesus affirmed him. He, he confirmed him and affirmed him at a later time. He set him down and he made him breakfast. How many know that story? Jesus made Simon Peter breakfast to affirm him, to remind him of his calling. And that's where he said, Peter, feed my sheep. He said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Jesus, I do. And if you know the story, Jesus asked him three times, why? Because he denied him three times. To affirm him three times. To remind him that regardless of how many times you deny me, you still have a plan. There's still a purpose written over your life. And if you'll take the necessary steps, you can fulfill it, Simon. And he's saying the same thing to each and every one of you this morning. Regardless of the mistakes you've made, regardless of where you are, or how long you've been waiting, plan A is still written over your life. It's not changed, it's not dissolved, it's not eradicated, it's not removed. Is still there. And so, Father, I pray that you would speak to every heart and mind that's in this house today, those that are viewing online, that they would come to grips, that you have a plan and a purpose for their life, regardless of where they are, where they've been, regardless of the mistakes, regardless of how long they've been waiting and maybe walked away through the process. God, affirm them in this service today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would bring affirmation into the hearts and the minds of your people in this house today. Confirm their calling. Confirm their purpose. And God, let them leave this place today knowing that you have a plan and a purpose. And that in time, when they're ready, when the ground's ready, when the seed is ready, it will be harvested, fulfilled. So thank you, Father. Thank you for the word today. Thank you for each and every person that's here today. And I pray that we would all be filled with patience in the hour that we're walking into we thank you in your mighty name with every head bowed every eye closed before we leave I want to give the opportunity for anyone here that says pastor I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior but I'd like to take that step I'd like to make that commitment I'd like to ask for forgiveness 
If that's you, if there's anyone in the house today, would you simply raise your hand and we'll lead you in a prayer. Anyone in the place? Okay. All right, look at me. God is faithful. Regardless of who has been unfaithful to you, regardless of what you've walked through, God is always faithful. And so, Father, as we leave today, I pray that you would, we would leave full of faith, knowing that you are a faithful God. And, God, that we would be a light, an example to the world this week, that we might win some for you. God, lead us into conversations, into opportunities with those who don't know you. Open doors of ministry this week, God, so that we might plant a seed, speak life, pray with a friend, a family member, and lead them to Christ. In your mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. We release you to your mission field. Be blessed.